All right. I hope everybody can hear me okay. I hope I'm looking all right. It is Monday. <clears throat> all right. Let's see. <laughs> the Yabbit has joined. Hello, Katie. How are you doing? Charlie, how are you doing? I guess it's Monday evening for you. It is Monday morning for us over here. The Holy Ghost Grits. You're new to the show. Egan of Florida, how are you doing? Tolly, what is up? All right, Jaron Allen. All right, buddy. How you doing out there in Missouri? Oh, yeah. And, oh, no, there is audio. Let me try that again, Jennifer, and then if not, you'll have to join us over in Instagram. So, it looks like... All right. I reset. All right. So let's see how it's going. All right. Hello, Christina. How are you doing? Jaron, it's good to hear that Missouri is doing all right. All right, guys. So, you know, I, I woke up this morning without much to talk about. I wasn't really sure. And then I had put together a list of things that I wanted to talk about. And now I have too many. But that's all right. That's okay. I will always move things to tomorrow if I can't get to them all. I just really appreciate all of you joining me today. Uh, Jennifer, I restarted it over there in Restream World, and it seemed to work better on my end. I don't know. You'll have to let me know how things are working. Um, so I reset it, Jennifer. We'll see. And if... So here's the thing, guys. Um, you know, there was a couple things I wanted to talk about. One is there has been a there has been a ratings bump on YouTube. I don't out of um, from last week. It was only one. Maybe it's an anomaly. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Jennifer. I guess you'll have to join us over in Instagram land. I could try it one more time. And let's see. I, all right, let her. I didn't. I'm gonna restart. So there was a there was a ratings bump, and I was really excited. However, I don't know if it's an anomaly or not over there in. Uh, YouTube land, but I, but let me say this, guys. If you watch this replay or archived or live on YouTube, give me a comment, give me a like, give me a subscribe. All those things help it get to more viewers. It gets suggested more. It really helps. When It's funny, when I see somebody comment or I get a few comments on a YouTube video, usually the next couple streams are higher. So, to to be, uh oh, General Jen is coming over to Instagram land. So we'll just deal with that. I'll just shut this down then, because that is annoying for everybody when it doesn't work. Well, that that's a bummer, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, so if you are, if you do watch this on YouTube land, please. Give me a comment. Give me a like. It really helps the show. Uh, I had a the last week. I don't know if it was because I talked about Chaz, the Capitol Hill autonomous zone in Seattle, or what. And that's a hot topic. But I had gotten a lot more views, so it was interesting. It was nice to see uh, more people paying attention. But but uh, as always, we'll we'll see. Anyway, so. But thank you guys for that. I had a wonderful week last week. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the marketing series. That was quite fun. That was interesting. And, and Jen has joined us over at Instagram. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, now it is called CHOP. Do you know what that stands for, uh, Tali? Is it Capitol Hill um, uh, peep of, the, of the people? Capitol Hill of the people? Is that what it is? Yes, Jennifer, it is nice over here because we have we have uh, 
we have quite a wonderful crowd over here. And of course, you know, you know everybody. You've heard their names. Guys, you could say hello to General Jen. She, <laughs> General Mod Jen over from Periscope is joining us. We had glitches, issues. All right. That is a restream issue. And that, that's what makes it difficult. Um, okay, so moving forward, now, look at that, Jen. Charlie is bearing gifts. <laughs> oh, Capitol Hill Occupy protest. That's what it is. Right on. Okay. Um, interesting. Well, I have a few things to say about that, but I'll save it till the end. I hope everyone is doing well. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, so this week, we had dropped the... Dan Harris episode. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Dan is also the host of 10% Happier Podcast and has also been on Good Morning America and ABC News. He's been a correspondent and he has found himself in quite a, a career. Uh, he had been, a, I believe, a war correspondent. He had been in a lot of uh, heavy situations as a reporter and had gotten used to, to that sort of ent adrenaline and and just being in high pressure situations. And when he had left that scene, he had found himself missing a lot of that the adrenaline that comes with that. And with that, he, he did a, he started doing a, a lot of uh, partying as, as a way to, to cope with all of that. At least this is the story that I have, and, and, and my apologies if I have it wrong. With that, with the pressures of going live every day, which I can understand how he might feel, I would think going live on Good Morning America carries with it a lot more uh, stress and anxiety than going live for you lovely people every day. Um, talk about being in front of millions and being live. Um, that certainly carries with it a lot of anxiety and stress, pressure. And he literally had a panic attack breakdown while going live one day uh, on Good Morning America, which put him in a position to look for ways to decompress and get more settled and control over his life and his emotions and feelings with such a high pressure job. He was also partying a lot during that time, that, which wasn't helping. Uh, well, yes, Tally. Tally says it sounds like PTSD. Uh, he says that he had a certain amount of that. Now, partying all the time, and I can tell you as somebody who in my past used to do a lot of partying as a rock and roller, you can't keep up with how you partied as you were younger, as you get older, your body starts to change. However, you still need to maintain the same level of partying in order to get the same effects. And as your body slowly starts to mature, break down, needs more time to recuperate, the length, that the amount of partying that you still need in order to reach that same level of satisfaction are at odds with each other. And, and if you're also trying to maintain a career in which you are at the level of Dan Harris, you're going to find yourself running into being at odds with yourself. And I can tell you, I, I, I had been there. It's not a pleasant feeling. Um, so Dan's doctor had told him to look into meditation. It was something that Dan had never thought would be something that could help him during this time. Dan is a is a very logical numbers kind of guy. Meditation for a lot of people, including myself, had an appearance 
of a as a as a woo woo sort of nebulous thing hard to comprehend its benefits it's just one of those things that works differently for everybody but dan was put in a position that if he didn't get his life handled might find himself losing his career that he had worked so long on so dan took up meditation and what do you know it had helped him tremendously and he now is such an advocate for it that he has wrote several books on it has a podcast dedicated to it and has went on tours as a way to speak to people to get people to try the practice and as you guys know i talked about this a few weeks ago that in reading dan's book i had come to a place where i had given it a try as well i had found great benefits for it. I'm certainly not going to be somebody who is going to be preaching about it. We'll let Dan do that. He's much more knowledgeable in the area. However, I did a, a, a one session meditation that he wrote in his book, was, which was just find a comfortable spot, concentrate on 10 breaths, nice and slow, relaxing, close your eyes, and just focus on the breaths. That's it. Let your mind wander. And I have to say that I had felt tremendously better afterwards. And I've been trying to implement at least five minutes a day to that practice. Now, that's something I'm working on. I haven't been all that great with it. Uh, I have skipped a few days, but I am working on it, and I've, I've seen its benefits. So I suggest you guys listen to that episode, and I also suggest you try some of the practices. Diana, welcome to the show this morning. I hope you're doing well in Montana. Joe Mackley, buddy, how's Colorado? I hope you also are doing well, and thank you for joining in. So with that, Dan, oh, Nolene from Ireland has joined in for her, her evening wind down. Thank you, Nolene. So with that, check out the episode. It's really rad. Try out some of the practices. They're simple. They're great. They will really help. I think with everything that's going on, we all need a little bit of a more opportunity to wind down. Jennifer says it's very grounding and calming. And calming. I, enjoy, I, I, I agree. Eric John. Hello, Johnny. Well, thank you very much, Eric. And hello to you as well. So with Dan's podcast called 10% Happier, I decided this morning to write down 10 things that I think would increase your level of happiness by 10%. And if we times that by 10, right, then we got 100% happier. How many of you guys want to be 10%? Sorry. <laughs> how, many, sorry, how many of you guys want to be 100% happier? So by implementing 10 of these, of each 10%, we will find our way there. Now, you cannot do all these at one time. This is why people get fed up with self-development and they usually, they usually cancel themselves out. However, if you take the time to implement each one of these over the next year you will increase your daily happiness by 100% that you are feeling right now. Yes, Jennifer, first coffee, then math. Thank you very much. Math is not my strong suit. Uh, <laughs> I'm more of a creative than a numbers guy. So, you know, that's why I'm always here out front. AJ's more of a numbers guy. He's, not, he's making sure everything runs smoothly. So that as I'm running my mouth to you all, uh, you guys can check out our website and everything else in our, in our wonderful programs that will help you increase your happiness. But anyway, here's my list. All right, let's go, let's go through the list. Remember, you can't implement all these at one time. However, if you take the next year to implement each one of these, then you will be 100% much happier than you are now. I say it's worth it, wouldn't you? Now, 
Number one, let's just start smiling more on a daily basis. Now, I understand that a lot of you people might think that you're smilers. I used to think I was a smiler, but I remember looking at my space pictures back in the day and I wasn't much of a smiler. I always had a lot of things that I was worried about. I wasn't focused on the right, on the right things. And I also remember in my journey, one in self-development, one of the first ideas that I had read about was just your presentation and just how your body sits is going to make you think and feel in a certain manner. And the challenge was to go a whole week focusing on your smiling. And I did that. And my, my daily happiness, positivity, and just general feelings increased throughout the week. So I spent the next month focusing on smiling every day until my default was changed and I was smiling <laughs> on a regular, much better. My sense of humor increased, my, the, the levity of life increased, um, uh, and I was a much happier person. So, smiling. Proven mathematically, statistically, you can do look. You can look up the research to help you increase. So is Monday a bad day? I don't. I don't know what that means. Monday's a good day, Charlie. So smiling. First one on the list, guaranteed to increase your happiness by ten percent. Number two, getting on a schedule, making sure. <laughs> making sure that you wake up and that you're going to bed on a, on a schedule by allowing yourself to have this schedule it allows your body to settle into a structure that allows itself to heal, to recharge with, without it, it's, it. It adds stress and pressure to your, your, your daily life. And it's not going to, your body is not going to get in a, into a cycle that allows itself to decompress, to relax, to heal, to recharge. So making sure that you're going to bed and you're waking up at a regular time. Also, how do you do this? How do you make that happen? By having a wind down structure at the end of the evening, perhaps you're reading, maybe some soft music, maybe you have some, some sleepy time tea, put your phone or any sort of devices away an hour before bed. This will help your brain slow down, chill out. Going to bed on time is my weakness. It used to be mine, Jennifer, uh, but I, I certainly had to put the devices down. Having your schedule, make sure you're working out. Having your coffee, get fired up. These are not things that come naturally. You have to help them come naturally. And once you build your schedule, you will find that even when you don't have to wake up or go to sleep at a certain time, you then will just start to do that. You will have programmed yourself. Your body has these mechanisms. Number three, hey, let's start eating some whole foods. Come on, guys, stop eating garbage. Stop eating crap. Processed stuff is no good. Sugars, no good. Let's make sure that we're eating healthy proteins and fats. I'm certainly not going to tell you what to eat, but by eating better foods, it helps your body run at a more optimum level, which is going to increase your happiness. I remember when I changed my diet, just how much my body had seemed to respond to that, which made everything else easier. If you're eating foods that make you sluggish, well, then you're not going to want to do the other things that are going to help this. And what we're setting up here is each one of these helping the other. <laughs> Tally, stop it, Sean. What's in your fridge? 
Well, I get pre-made meals uh, weekly from Freshly, Tali, and that's what's in my fridge. And then also a, a bowl of hard-boiled eggs and seltzer waters. That's what's in my fridge. <laughs> um, number four. Hey, limit social media. We have now gotten to the point where we realize that social media is bad for our, our mental stability. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. The experiment is over, the data is in. Look where we are as a society. <laughs> social media, bad idea. We need to limit it. Just because it's there, doesn't make sure that it works. Now. Here, I also want you guys to notice, there was an interesting observation that Brett Weinstein had made on his, that has been made on his podcast, where Brett said that he likes to follow a, a full 360 of different viewpoints so that he's getting arguments from every side of every societal issue, cultural problem, politics, and he realized that because of the way he tweets out, that the algorithm seems to have read his tweets that he is more right-leaning, which his news feed is only giving him more right-leaning stuff. Brett thinks that because he's following left-wing um, accounts that he's getting that information, and he's not. So the algorithm is cheating him out of getting a 360 view and his brain because of who he follows thinks it's getting that information if that observation is true that is incredibly troubling so limit social media so and I, guys i did a, a lot this week to try to avoid social media uh and my my weekend was better less stressed out so be cautious of how these things are not keeping you informed. Social media is keeping you misinformed. And, and if you're misinformed, I would say, yeah, down with the algorithm. This stuff is awful. Experiment failed. The experiment of keeping all of us connected and attached and, and, and working with each other failed. A big fat F on social media and their and its plan on keeping us all connected. It is it is drawn a wedge in between all of us. One that we now have to fix. Thank you, Silicon Valley. Um make sure that what you're taking in on consumption is it's thought provoking and inspiring rather than humdrum stuff that just keeps your mind from dealing with what's going on around you. If you're looking for stuff to numb you or to take your mind off what's going on, then you're not being mindful and you're not checking in with yourself and you're unable to fix problems that are suppressing your feelings and, and, focusing them on issues and problems that are making you feel worse. So be careful of what you take in. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven, I think we're on seven. Number six, find ways to express yourself. If you're not creating, then you're just consuming. So However you might, if you want to make a podcast, if you want to write songs, if you want to paint, if you want to draw, if, if you want to, there's so many applications on your phone on your, uh, and apps that will help you express and create because without this outlet, we, it's as human beings, the way we connect to others is by expressing ourselves. You realize that when you're retweeting articles and things like that, you are expressing yourself in a manner that might not be as productive as you think. And it's, we're expressing ourselves in very polarized 
manner where if you write a song or if you write some poetry or you paint a picture, you're expressing yourself in, an, in a more of an abstract manner that you can connect with many more people who are interpreting your creation in a way that allows them to feel good. Where if you retweet an article, it's a very, it's a very set in stone message. And the connecting is only with people that agree on your viewpoint. We cannot as a society talk to each other if we can't express ourselves in ways that others can interpret in, in, in ways that allows them to feel connected with you. I mean, there are artists whose politics I don't agree with, but who write music or poetry or books that are so uplifting in the way that I've interpreted them that allow me to feel as if somebody understands me. This only comes from creating in abstract ways through art. This is why art is such a powerful and appreciative form of communication. So find ways to connect through art, create. Number seven, get your ass to the gym. You need to produce the chemicals that allow you to feel good. They don't happen automatically. When you're a teenager, when you're 20 years old, you wake up with those sorts of chemicals pulsating through your body. But as you age, the production of those start to uh, calm down and you have to work to get them out there. You have to work, you have to, you have to eat right, get on your schedule and move your body to start to, to help your body produce the chemicals that allow you to feel well. Uh, eight, mindfulness. Find opportunity to check in with yourself, to take some notes, to see how you're feeling, to look with things that you can improve in your life. If you're numbed out, binging on Netflix, you're unable to do this. If you're endlessly scrolling, you're unable to connect with yourself. Nine, positivity. It's time to start focusing on the wonderful things that are going on in your life, then focusing on, uh, then focusing on all the negative. And let's just be honest. All the, a lot of the negative stuff is coming from uh, the, the streams, the swiping in social media. We need to detached from all that. Everyone who lives in America, everyone who's watching this right now has a lot to be thankful of and a lot to be positive about. And lastly, the, one of the most important things that had some of the most significant change in my life was living through your core values. By understanding what your five core values are, and engaging with them in a daily basis in order to revel in what is important to you and that makes your days worth living is your core values. I can't stress it enough. That changed my life. So there's your list of 10 things that if you implement in your life, you will be 100% happier and better. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end today's call. I will see you all tomorrow. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you give me a, a, a like, a share, a, a subscribe, leave a comment. These things all help. Oh, also, also I'll leave it with this. I wrote, I'll talk about Chaz a little bit. Um, you know what? I'll save that for tomorrow. Well, let's save that for tomorrow. Let me just go through the comments. You guys are awesome. Also, if you enjoy what I have to say today and are interested in our programs, check out the Art of Charm Communication Accelerator. It is in the link tree above in the descriptions of YouTube and in the link tree of our Twitter bio. It is all of our best bits from our live online training programs live training programs, online training programs, and our expert guests over the last 15 years on the podcast. All right, guys.
Thank you very much. The Yabbit uh, says it's always great. Thank you very much. This, uh, thank you so much. Are you in a hurry today? Yes, I am, Charlie. I have another meeting to get to, my friend. That's why I'm always out at nine. Uh, positivity comes to default when mindful is practicing. Yes, absolutely, General Jen. Joe Mackley, amazing, Johnny. You've had, <laughs> you've had some good vibes only. Coffee this morning, how are you? Yes, absolutely. Are you practicing yoga? Not as much as I should be, Charlie, but that's something that I'm working on. All right, follow the news. Yes, following the news doesn't make you happy, I agree. Jen says, down with the algorithm. Absolutely, the algorithm is working against us. So, on a societal level, on an emotional level, and on an, an a mental level. All three of those. This technology of social media, roughly after a decade, has failed miserably. I said, you know, can I just say that Silicon Valley has blown it? Their intentions were good. Their intentions were lofty. But after 10 years of this experiment, I say, I'd say the conclusions, <laughs> if we look on a personal and societal level, teen suicide is through the roof, depression through the roof, society as a whole is angry, we are not getting along, we are in a downward spiral of, of our cooperation and our ability to communicate with each other. And as somebody who works in communication, do you know how much chatting I do with, with young men and women who have just had it with everybody? It, it's working against us. So I give, social, I give Silicon Valley social media a big F and they got a lot of work to do to bring us all back together. In fact, I think that should be their main goal, to figure out how they are gonna bring us back together because they, they should close that place. <laughs> Charlie, I agree, absolutely. All right, guys, I gotta head out. I will see you all tomorrow. Let's, we'll talk some chats. All right, wonderful. Have a great day.